Welcome to 3D Flow Academy. Last time we mentioned masking, and with this episode we'll expand on that topic. With masking you can remove unwanted parts of your photos, so that Zephyr will ignore completely that part of the image. This is especially useful, for example, when you're dealing with very reflective surfaces, but most importantly, when you're moving your subject, so that you can reconstruct it in its full shape. We first take photos of the object in its natural position. We then proceed to move the object and take more photos. Now that the dataset is ready, we must make sure to select Mask Images when starting a new project. You can then proceed normally down the Zephyr reconstruction pipeline. The masking page will appear during the wizard. Click Launch 3DF Masquerade to show the Masquerade window. Photos will be automatically loaded. Masquerade allows you to quickly mask images using the red brush for the foreground, what you want to keep, and the blue brush for the background, what you want to discard. Select the red brush and roughly draw the shape of your object by left-clicking and dragging. Then select the background with the blue brush. The assisted mode works better with uniform backgrounds. You can have a better look of the silhouette using the black and white button. You can then fix the shape using other tools such as lasso, polyline or square. You can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and pan by keeping the mouse wheel pressed down and moving the mouse. As you can see, the printed black dots are actually a bad choice for this workflow. They help as a guide to know how many degrees I should rotate the object but being so close to the subject, some color bleeds in and make the automated masking more difficult. If I had used a completely white paper, the brush system would have worked much better, so we may have to manually fix the masks if we want optimal results, or be ok with some noise that we'll eventually have to clean in Zephyr. You can try to automatically compute the next silhouette using the gear icon. When you're happy with your mask, simply proceed to the next one automatically, or you can select any other image in the right panel by double-clicking it. Click the Save icon to save your mask, or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-S. You can delete unwanted strokes with the right-click mouse button. Repeat the process for the remaining images. You can also use left Ctrl plus left-click to use the unselected brush. When finished, simply quit Masquerade and proceed normally with the 3D reconstruction process. After the sparse point cloud has been generated, you can clearly see by looking at the camera positions how we cheated Zephyr into thinking that the statue was floating in space. Some noise due to imperfect masks can be seen already after the sparse point cloud generation. In some cases, the noise filter will take care of it automatically, but if you see some rogue points in the dense cloud, Make sure to remove them using the lasso tool. In this case, everything went well, so we can proceed directly to the mesh generation. Let's take a look at the copy mask to the next image tool. This is very useful when you have a fixed obstacle in all your photos, for example, part of a drone or the roof of a car equipped for photography. Simply mask the first image and use this tool to copy the mask to all the remaining images. Masking is a powerful tool that can save your datasets in many occasions. For example, imagine that you are taking pictures of a building and a moving car passes by. Masking is a great tool to remove objects that randomly come into your photos. Thank you for watching and don't forget to join our 3D Flow Academy Facebook group to vote for the next tutorial. For those who are watching during Black Friday 2017, make sure to check our Steam sales and Black Friday specials at 3dflow.net.